Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this engineering economics lesson, we'll be looking at the effect of inflation on the time value of money. So, inflation is the changing value of our currency. The idea being that if you had a $100 bill and you put it in a box and you forgot about it, and 20 years later you found it, well, what right now would buy you an incredibly nice steak dinner out someplace, might buy you a little snack at Taco Bell 20 years from now. We measure the rate of inflation using the consumer price index, if it's items being purchased for ourselves. And we use something like the SEPSI as a measure of inflation in the chemical industry. Now the rate of inflation can simply be determined using uh, inflation rates for the SEPSI at different years. So if you looked from the period from 1995 to 2001, the SEPSI changed from 381 to 394 over that time period. If you take that inflation rate or try to determine that inflation rate, uh, this was a six-year period, so the sixth root of 394 over 381 is 0.6%. So just over half a percent inflation. But if you look at the next six-year period, 2001 to 2007, when the SEPSI grew to 500, you see the inflation rate is 5%. So this inflation rate will vary over time. We're going to be looking at the effect of this on our interest rate problems. So this is really going to affect the purchasing power of our dollars. The idea is that if I have a future value F, the purchasing power of that money F prime can be calculated by dividing the future value by one plus the inflation rate to the nth power, the number of years into the future we're looking. So F prime again is the purchasing power, and that's really the one that matters most to us. So if I got that future value, if I started with some money now, I invested it at a rate of I, but it was subject to inflation at the rate F, I can find the purchasing value in the future by taking that present value times 1 plus i over 1 plus f all to the nth power. This gives me an inflation adjusted interest rate that should be equivalent to 1 plus i over 1 plus f. And so I can approximate this using 1 plus i, as i prime is 1 plus i over 1 plus f, minus 1. And for small values of interest rate and inflation, this is approximately equal to i minus f. Usually when my interest rates are under 10%, this is not too bad an approximation. Now let's look at an example. The first cost of a certain piece of machinery is $60,000, and you're going to use this for five years. At the end of that time, you're going to be able to salvage it for $10,000, so you'll reclaim some money in five years' time. Each year, you're going to have operating costs of $20,000 every year. We have an inflation rate of 4%, and the company has an expected interest rate of 12%. We want to first draw a discrete cash flow diagram and then determine what is the present value of this project. So let's first talk about what all we've got going on here. Uh, I have an interest rate of 12%. Okay. I have an inflation rate of 0.04. I prime, the inflation adjusted rate, is going to be 1.112 over 1.04 minus 1. 
which is 1.076923 minus 1, or 7.7% 7 .7 inflation-adjusted interest. Now compare this to 12% minus 4%, which was 8%. Okay, it's not bad, but it's not so close. Again, I find that this is better when my interest rates are under 10%. Okay, so this one was a little outside of that. I don't think that's really an awesome approximation. So this is the better answer and the one that we will use. Now it says to draw a discrete cash flow diagram. So this is a five year period. So times zero, one, two, three, four, five. And I, the first year I'm going to spend $60,000. The next year I'm going to spend 20,000 and each year I'm going to spend 20K over the life of the project, five years. In the last year, however, I'm also going to salvage this and receive 10K. I want to know what's the present value of this project with inflation figured in. So therefore I have a $60,000, which is a present value. And I'm just going to leave out all of those zeros. I'll multiply by them at the end. Um, I have an annuity of 20,000. So this, I have an annuity and I'm wanting a present value. And then I have a future value where $10,000 is a future value I want to bring to the present. And again, that's a five year period. And I'll multiply all of this times 1,000 because I didn't want to write the thousands on each one of those, okay? So does this make sense to you? Make sure that you understand. I'm using the inflation adjusted interest rate in this formula. So the present value is of course gonna be this negative $60,000 uh, minus, this becomes $80,506 and the final value has a present value of $6,904. So the present value of this entire thing is it will cost me a negative, well, it will cost $1,100,033. Okay, can't talk. And $602. So this is a cost, and this is in inflation-adjusted dollars. Thank you very much for the time. We're going to be looking next at, we're going to be heading towards figuring taxes. And we need to have a little discussion about depreciation next. Thank you very much for your time.